Hey guys, my name is Josh Javahiri, and this is another Unreal Development Kit tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about mesh or vertex painting in the development kit, and this is part of my Material Editor Fundamental series. And uh, we're going to talk about gathering references uh, and importing textures. We're going to touch on uh, compression settings of those textures, and we're going to go through the basic shader setup of a uh, vertex uh, painting uh, shader. So, uh, after that, we'll go ahead and apply that material to a mesh and show you how to use the mesh paint tool so hope you guys enjoy the tutorial thanks a lot all right so I did a quick Google search and found this image as a reference and uh, basically what I'm gonna get out of this reference image is that I want to create uh, a material that I'm gonna apply to uh, a tessellated surface and I'm gonna vertex paint it so this material is gonna have uh, three components to it. I'm going to have a stucco or concrete um, layer. I'm going to have a brick underneath layer and I'm also going to have a, a layer for cracks. That's just going to affect uh, the normal map of the material. Okay, so I went to CG Textures and found some good photorealistic or photo textures and I was able to create these tileable textures. I think they're 512 resolution. Uh, these two are going to be my diffuse for my um, concrete or stucco and this will be my diffuse for my bricks. Now this one I'm just going to use as a, uh, a map to generate a normal map based off of. So I've gone ahead and actually generated normal maps based on all three of those. Uh, and uh, this is what I have here. So here's the uh, cracks, here's the concrete normal, and uh, here's the uh, bricks normal. So um, going into 3D Studio now, um, what I've done is I've created a, a rather heavily tessellated um, static mesh. It's just a wall, and basically we need it to be tessellated because um, we need vertice information. Basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting color information on the vertices and uh, obviously you need vertices to do that. Okay, so I've imported the uh, textures now and uh, you know, just make sure that when you import it, uh, if you don't have a alpha channel, go ahead and click on uh, compression no alpha when you import it. And for normal maps, it's a good idea to set the compression settings to TC underscore normal map. Now I've also imported a noise underscore opacity map. Uh, it's just a generic cloud noise map. We're going to use that in the material. I've also imported the static mesh here and uh, we'll go ahead and look at the material now um, I've created a few materials but really we're just going to look at the vertex paint uh, setup material because uh, that's what this tutorial is about alright so let's take a look at this and uh, I'll notice right away that it's pretty simple looking right here and then we have these two uh, networks um, here and they're actually the same network so it's not too bad we can just look at one and get the idea but Basically what you want to do when you want to create a vertex painting type shader is uh, make use of the LERP or the linear interpolation node and you can find that under math linear interpolate. Basically what a linear interpolate does is it takes two inputs, two textures, and it takes this alpha here and basically what it does is the alpha controls what percent uh, from 0 to 1 um, to render uh, between the A texture and the B texture. So if I have um, the alpha set to 1, I believe the B texture will show up 100%, whereas if I have an alpha that's set to a constant 0, um, the first texture will show up 100%. You can also have values that are in between, so it'll basically kind of render both on top of each other with whatever uh, weight you put for the alpha. So I'm going to make a quick modification and show you what a very simple um, what a very simple vertex shader like this uh, setup would be. So let's add a vertex color, okay? And our basically the concept behind this is that we're going to use this vertex color to control the alpha, what's being rendered um, at each vert vertice. So I'm going to plug the red into the alpha for the diffuse. And uh, the same concept goes for the normal. So basically we're just deciding which one of these to render at a certain vertice. Um, for the, for the diffuse and which normal map to render at a certain vertice uh, for, for, the, for the normal. So I'm going to plug the red into this one and this one and I'm going to add the green to this alpha. And let, let's go ahead and uh, draw some, uh, some vertices now. So I'm going to uh, up a quick scene here with my uh, uh, mesh that I've imported and I just threw a couple of them into this uh, blank map here I'm gonna go ahead and select this mesh and select the mesh paint mode tool and uh, Notice that I'm on uh, RGB mode and I'm just gonna go ahead and paint some color 
onto this mesh now and we'll see what happens. So I've uh, made the radius pretty big and I've added the strength to 100% uh, so we notice that I can paint colors onto this mesh now. If we go to view off you notice that basically what happened there is I'm turning off this normal map here. So the normal um, these cracks here are only being rendered on the white and not on the red. Now if I change the color from our uh, from red to green, so we get a hundred percent green. I can add some bricks to this now. So really, the important thing to notice here is that um, it's blending, you know, basically uh, in, interpolating from zero to one between the vertices, and it's just kind of blending them nice and smoothly. It doesn't really make sense for this material, right? So let's go ahead back to the material and make some changes so that I can get some like nice hard uh, random edges in here between the blending. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this vertex color and I'm going to basically show you guys uh, this structure here. So I've basically added the vertex color over here and I've uh, pulled it into these two networks here. And uh, the networks are the same um, with the only difference uh, being that I'm pulling the green to the one below it and the red channel of the vertex color node uh, to the top. Okay, so um, I've pulled in my texture sample and I'm multiplying that with the red channel of the vertex color. Uh, I'm pulling that out more by multiplying it by a value 4 and I'm adding that again to the red vertex color. Now this is kind of the really important part um, because now we're going to um, take that to a power uh, and I've created a, a parameterized version of this and I've clamped it from 0 to 1. Now this is a method from uh, a guy called uh, Chris Alblun, so I have to give credit where credit's due. Uh, he has a great tutorial on advanced vertex painting. He's got a lot of other tutorials too, but um, uh, you know I can't really take credit for for this uh, method here. And this is going to give us some nice hard uh, edges. So uh, I'm going to pull this into the uh, <clears throat> alpha for the red, uh, where I want the red uh, painting to go. And uh, which are these two? And then I uh, basically duplicated this setup here. Uh, pulled the greens into it though, and I'm going to pull that right into the alpha for my second layer of uh, of uh, the lerp. So I realized that I, I might not have really explained what I'm doing down here, the difference between this guy and this guy is, but basically I'm just creating series of uh, lerps. So. Um, basically, I'm making the decision of how much to render between these two textures with this lerp, and that's being controlled by the red, and then that is getting plugged into the A. So I can keep kind of making these, um, you know, networks of uh, of lerps and keep adding layers on layers if I if I want to. Uh, so let's go ahead and save this, and uh, we can jump back into our map and. Uh, probably see some interesting changes and there we go immediately we see the hard edges instead of that smoothness uh, that we had before and uh, so something like this actually makes sense for you know a wall maybe where some bricks or something are showing up behind it but you know if we were to have something like terrain where you wanted a smooth transition then you don't even need to worry about that whole second part uh, you definitely would want that uh, linear interpolation that nice gradient interpolation so let's go ahead and play with this a little bit more I'm going to paint um, I'm painting black now. I'm going to paint blue, 100% uh, blue, and these are my bricks. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the radius and play with this a little bit more. And uh, here's my uh, down there. My bricks on the bottom. Maybe there's some wear and tear underneath. Um, and uh, maybe. I believe this is also pressure sensitive. So if you have a tablet or something, um, you know you can you can get some interesting results. Now if I paint with white, I should get cracks, and there are my cracks. And uh, so that's good. So maybe I don't want cracks everywhere, just on the top or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so there you go. I mean, uh, it's pretty simple. Now I can pretty much do this to all of my environments using this material. I'm using one material and getting. A really unique mix of uh, 
of uh, basically a blended vertex uh, painting here. So yeah, it's a fun uh, fun way to uh, to experiment with uh, an environment. Uh, definitely a good way to add grunge. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know what else to really say about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's a pretty quick and simple one. Um, again, please visit that guy's uh, website if you like this tutorial because he's got some of the pretty cool stuff. And uh, yeah, so feel free to uh, follow me on Twitter. And again, questions, comments, always welcome. Uh, this was another user requested tutorial. So thank you.